Welcome to the Healthy Living Revolution. My name is Sean Myers. The Healthy Living Revolution is a movement of people who are taking healthy back. We're offering this series to bring some simple solutions and simple education. Our speaker for this episode is a good friend of mine, Dr. David Phillips. Dr. Phillips graduated from Harvard University in 1984, where he earned academic honors and was an all-American swimmer. After graduation, he spent time in a research lab at Duke University investigating methods for the early detection of pancreatic cancer. He received his medical degree from Wright State University of Medicine, where he was elected to the prestigious National Academic Alpha Omega Alpha Medical Honor Society. And after practicing as a board-certified emergency physician, he came to the realization that many of the diseases he was treating were also very preventable by adopting a healthy lifestyle. As a result, Dr. Phillips used both his academic knowledge and athletic background and shifted his entire focus to the field of prevention and med prevention in medicine. He has written numerous articles on the important role that nutrition plays in overall health and particularly in athletic performance. Dr. Phillips has also competed in triathlons over the last several years, winning numerous regional as well as national masters competitions including the St. Croix Half Marathon, which qualified him to compete in the World Ironman Championships in Hawaii. Dr. Phillips lectures internationally to thousands, sharing a passion with what he has learned about living a healthy lifestyle to people from all walks of life, from weekend warriors to professional athletes. He and his wife, Heidi, also an accomplished Ironman triathlete are also the proud parents of three athletic boys, two of which have received individual doctorates in physical therapy and theology, and one who is a graduate of the United States Military Academy at West Point. We want to introduce to you Dr. David Phillips. Thanks for tuning in. This is kind of a, a big subject, inflammation, really kind of a big hot topic today, and for good reason, because it's really the silent killer. Um, chronic systemic inflammation really is the root um, cause of a lot of chronic diseases in the, in the human body. So it's my hope um, to educate you on both uh, the beneficial effects of inflammation, of which there are some, as well as the detrimental effects in human physiology. And more importantly, what lifestyle changes um, can we do to minimize the effects of inflammation? You know, healthy diets and physical activity really are powerful tools in combating inflammation. And uh, a whole bunch of other diseases as well. So um, along those lines, uh, we're also going to address supplementation with whole food concentrates and why I think it is absolutely necessary and how gold standard research really demonstrates this to be you know, a very powerful tool or catalyst in reducing uh, inflammation. And finally, um, I'll relate just a couple of stories of how powerful whole food nutrition can be and why taking over the counter or prescription anti-inflammatory medicine you know, it may not always be uh, the right way to combat this whole issue. And so I think you'll see that if you give your body the right nutrients and engage in a healthy lifestyle, um, that, you know what, our bodies are remarkably efficient machines and they're capable of incredible healing properties. And so, you know, inflammation, the Latin root for that is inflammare or to um, set on fire. And really, inflammation is a function of the immune system and it's very tightly balanced with the immune system so if you've got a healthy immune system the good chances are that your inflammatory process is going to be regulated it's when the immune system kind of gets screwed up and you end up with no regulation or no signal response that you end up with chronic systemic inflammation which can cause a whole boatload of problems and so you know the cardinal signs of inflammation were coined like way back i think it was like 25 or 35 BC, and when they kind of recognize the cardinal signs of inflammation, which are heat, redness, um, swelling, pain, and then Burkow, some centuries later, uh, coined the loss of function due to the pain and inflammation. So it's known way, way, way back when, but there's a difference between acute inflammation and chronic inflammation, and these are some of the features that differentiate the two. Um, you know, acute inflammation typically happens pretty quickly, minutes to hours, whereas chronic inflammation can take days or months to kind of manifest itself. Um, tissue injury, when it comes to acute uh, inflammation, it's mild and usually self-limited. Um, but with chronic, it can be often severe and is oftentimes uh, progressive over a period of time. And the local and systemic signs typically for acute inflammation are pretty prominent. I mean, you can see it. It's pretty obvious. Whereas chronic inflammation is typically less prominent and actually may be more subtle and hard to, hard to actually see. And so 
for acute inflammation, like the stimuli that causes acute inflammation range anywhere from infections like acute bronchitis, okay, that's, that will cause an inflammatory reaction because you end up coughing and stuff. Foreign bodies like splinters, okay, that causes a, a, an acute inflammatory response. Tissue trauma, something like um, a burn of some kind, or immune reactions, kind of like when you get poison ivy. Now, all of those are, are kind of acute inflammatory processes, and they're actually pretty, that's normal. I mean, we need inflammation because what happens is, in this, and this is a good example, is if you get a, get a splinter, this is really what happens is that when the bacteria get inside your body, uh, it releases all these inflammatory uh, chemicals, or called cytokines, that actually then recruit in uh, the macrophages and all the cells that help destroy the bacteria. And that's kind of a loop. It ends, you know, once the bacteria is destroyed and, and the wound gets healed. And that's why wounds typically get inflamed. They swell up because of the recruitment of all these, these cells into the area to kill the bacteria. So you can think of a normal inflammatory reaction, a reaction as a, a protective response involving host cells, blood cells, and proteins. and Basically eliminates the initial cause of the cell injury. It removes damaged cells and tissues. And it, more importantly, initiates the, the process of repair. And as I mentioned, it's really, it, it's, it's inflammation is kind of induced by chemical mediators called cytokines. And I'm not going to go into great detail what those are. That's like for a whole other lecture. But, um, but it, that is, again, produced by the damaged host cells. The key here is it's very, um, very tightly controlled. Okay. It's normally controlled and very self-limited. Okay, so what happens if you have an excess of inflammatory reactions? Well, an inappropriate, again, inflammatory response is when there are no foreign substances to fight off, and that leads to, this, to autoimmune issues. And so, again, I can't stress that the inflammatory process is tightly regulated by the immune system to avoid this excessive tissue damage uh, and spillover to normal tissues. So we talked a little bit about kind of the, the things that cause acute inflammation. What causes chronic inflammation? Well, typically... The, the three big ones are persistent injury or infections, kind of like ulcers can set up for an, a, a chronic inflammatory condition. Uh, prolonged exposure to a toxic agent. Um, you know, for a while, you don't see it so much anymore, but things like silicosis or uh, exposure to silica causes this chronic inflammatory lung condition. And then the big ones that we see a lot of, uh, the arthritis, is rheumatoid arthritis is a great example of a chronic inflammatory condition. But the real big one that kind of over, overlies a lot of these, the big driver of a lot of chronic disease conditions is, is frankly obesity. And that's a big problem we have today because um, adipose tissue or fat cells are very active cells. And one of the things they do is release these inflammatory cytokines or these inflammatory chemicals that cause all of these problems in the human body. This is, this is what we can get control of, okay? This is what we have control of is, is kind of our own physiology in priming our ability to kind of fight off inflammation. And of course we know that, that and this is actually just a, a slide that's pretty brief. I mean, just pretty much every chronic inflammatory condition or chronic disease condition in the human body is really under the umbrella of chronic inflammation, ranging from cancer to cardiovascular disease, diabetes, pancreatitis, all these autoimmune diseases really kind of fall under chronic inflammation. And so, you know, the traditional way that we've been battling or trying to uh, reduce chronic inflammation uh, or inflammation is in, in standard is just by taking non steroidal anti-inflammatory medicine. So you can see here things like Aleve, Motrin, Ibuprofen, um, Ketoprofen. Some of these are prescriptions, some are just over the counter. But they cause lots of problems. You know, non steroidals have, have side effects. I mean, they might get rid of pain and some swelling, but they, you know, if you take them over a period of time, they can lead to things like ulcers and liver damage. Uh, in kidney failure. So really that kind of leads me to the issue of what can we do in our lifestyle? What can we incorporate and put into our bodies and do to our bodies <clears throat> that will help reduce inflammation without perhaps maybe having to take so much medication? And one of the big ones is exercise. Now exercise actually produces an acute inflammatory response initially, which is adaptive. It's part of what makes you a, a better athlete is inflammation. But over a period of time, they have shown that exercise actually decreases chronic inflammation. So that's why exercising is so important. And just walking is important because anytime you move your blood, anytime you're stimulating your body, um, you're allowing your body to adapt. And inflammation certainly is a, a big key to that. 
Um, and this actually just was published uh, a couple of months ago where they found, a big research study where they found that 20 minutes of just moderate treadmill exercise resulted in a 5% decrease in the number of stimulated immune cells producing tumor necrosis factor. And that's one of those inflammatory chemicals inside the human body. So think about that. In 20 minutes, with a 5% reduction, you take that over a long period of time, chronically, and, and you've, really got, you've really allowed your body to decrease that inflammation. And of course, foods that inflame it. Um, you know, refined carbohydrates, processed foods, dairy, sugar, red meat, all of these things, unfortunately, which are a huge part of our diets these days, um, or, you know, they're, they're inflammatory. They cause inflammation in the human body. And, you know, there are so many different diets that are on the market today. You know, the, the ketogenic diet, the paleo diet, and I'm asked a lot about those diets. And frankly, I kind of fall back on solid research and really the one diet that has the largest database of, of information and observational studies that has, that has been shown to be a very powerful anti-inflammatory diet is the Mediterranean diet. And we've heard about that uh, for a long time. And really what it, what it incorporates is lots of fruits and veggies. Uh, lean meats, proteins, fish is a big one because of the omegas, which we'll talk about here in a minute. But again, the key component to this diet <clears throat> is fruits and veggies. And of course, that bottle of wine back there in the back doesn't hurt either in moderation. Um, but when we talk about fruits and veggies, that's, that's the cornerstone to an anti-inflammatory diet. And you need plenty of fruits and veggies. And based on the most current epidemiological and observation studies, it's now recommended that we should be eating 7 to 13 servings of fruits and veggies every day. And the quantity is important, but the quality, because you know, unfortunately, the, the nutrient value of the produce that we have today is nothing compared to what we had years and years ago because of soil depletion, et cetera. This is a great graphic. You know, the amount of iron content in a bowl of spinach in 1953 would be equivalent to a whole boatload more spinach today because we've lost nutrient value. Uh, and that even includes uh, organic produce as well. And so that kind of leads me to talking about supplementation, why I think as a physician it's really important because of that issue of nutrient depletion, and we're not getting seven to 13 servings every day, and then not in the rainbow of colors, which is what we should be doing, that, that supplementing with whole food nutrition, not vitamin supplements, but whole food nutrition is really, really, in my, in my opinion, essential. And um, so I ask people, you know, if I could put exercise into a capsule, and you could put it in your body, and you get a benefit from it, I'm sure you probably take it, right? Well, unfortunately, <laughs> that doesn't exist. But we know that whole food nutrition in capsules does exist. And unfortunately, this is like the big wild, wild west out there when it comes to nutritional supplements. I'm sure that there are several of you who watching this that you, know, you get bombarded with all these different products on the market today. And, and I agree, it is the wild, wild west. It's really crazy out there. But what distinguishes one product from another, in my opinion as a physician, is, is research. And that's why I have been taking this product for over 10 years and recommending it called Juice Plus. The reason why I recommend it is because of the body of research. Um, and the research is gold standard, randomized, double blind, placebo controlled studies, top tier research. Uh, and it's been done, it, it got over 22 years of published research, now approaching 37, with many more uh, studies in, 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 the, in the pipeline. Um, and it's been studied at in, in, in various institutions, eight countries, four continents around the world, and institutions like Yale and Vanderbilt, uh, Medical University of Graz, MD Anderson Cancer Center. Um, as a physician, this is really big for me. You know, I know these institutions. These are high-end institutions that have done research on the product. That th this is unheard of uh, in this industry. A lot of companies will go to, you know, fairly unnamed institutions to do their research and say they have research. But when you go to Yale and Vanderbilt and MD Anderson Cancer Center, you're dealing with the top dogs. That was... Uh, that was a clincher for me as a doctor. And so what's in Juice Plus is 30 different fruits, veggies, and berries, and that's the rainbow of color. And I speak to a lot of people who juice, which is healthy, of course, but typically, um, you know, people who juice typically juice the same five, six, seven, eight things. It's the rainbow of color that's just as important as the quantity. And, you know, it, it, it's in a capsule, it's concentrated fruits and veggies in a capsule, and it comes in a bottle, but it's not a vitamin supplement. People think it's a vitamin supplement. Well, you do get most of your vitamins and minerals, but you're getting them from the plant source. This is the key, not the synthetic form that our bodies really don't know what to do with unless you have a deficiency disease, okay? But from the plant source, the form in which our bodies are meant to recognize and utilize. But it goes way beyond vitamins and minerals. You know, it, this is what you get 
uh, and juice plus that you don't get in a vitamin supplement. All the, the carotenoids and the polyphenols and the flavonoids, things that you get from eating bilberry and you know, black currant, which you don't go around eating every day, right? But those have tens of thousands of plant chemicals that are so important to the human body that we're really tapping into. They're important. So it's the wide variety, the rainbow of color, the natural form in which our bodies were meant to recognize and utilize. And when we're talking about inflammation, this is the newest product the company has. It's, it's all plant-based. It's a plant-based omega. And so the, the, the polyunsaturated fatty acids that are essential to our body, we hear about a lot. It's the omega-3 and 6. And typically, these are derived from, you know, like krill or, or fish, fish oil. And the, the thing is that the fish actually have to eat algae to convert it into DHA and EPA, which is those polyunsaturated fatty acids. But instead of sourcing from the fish, the company went right to the algae. So they, ob they obtain their omega blends from the algae, and then the rest is, comes from these cold-pressed seeds from pomegranate. You can see in sea buckthorn and raspberry. And that completes the spectrum of the omegas, not only three and six, but five, seven, and nine. And each of these has a distinct role inside the human body by decreasing inflammation, increasing cognitive functioning, improving cardiovascular wellness. Uh, the whole spectrum goes on and on. And I know this is a busy slide, I'm not going to spend much time on it, but I found this is fascinating because your diets typically on the, on the left side, if you look, you know, the, the omega-6s tend to be pro-inflammatory in, inside the human body. And that's primarily derived from all of these, um, you know, processed foods that we eat. And what happens is that when we get more omega-6s into our diet through this big conversion factor using these COX-1 and COX-2 inhibitor, um, that they, they basically, or not inhibitors, but the COX-1 and COX-2 en enzymes, they convert those omega-6s into very toxic um, uh, prostaglandins or cytokines that do damage, that increase sensitivity to pain, increase pain and swelling, uh, all kinds of problems. The omega-3s on the right, however, okay, um, actually work in an anti-inflammatory capacity. And if you look at how the non-steroidals work, well, the non-steroidals like Motrin act to block both the COX-1 and the COX-2 inhibitor. Okay, so that was, that's what decreases pain. The problem is, is that the COX-1 inhibitors also support intestinal mucosa, so they have a benefit. And so <clears throat> that's why people who take a lot of anti-inflammatory medicine can end up having ulcers. Okay, so you get the decrease in pain, but you're also getting some toxic um, uh, side effect from it as well. Well, the, the, the omegas do the opposite. They block that painful pathway, okay? So they block the inflammation, but they do not inhibit uh, the, the beneficial effects of having, you know, good mucosa. So you get all the benefits of pain relief following that same um, trajectory or the same pathway as the non -steroidals. And so I want to pivot a little bit, and I, t I mentioned that the company has lots and lots of research, you know, over 35 studies now. Um, but I want to just tell you a story before I close. Uh, and I've got thousands of stories. I just have limitation on um, my time tonight, but today. But um, what the story I'm going to tell you is it really follows what Hippocrates said. You know, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. What can happen to your body when you put the nutrients in it is amazing. Uh, and this is a story, one of the stories of several that I share. This is Shada, who is a pharmacist in the Tucson area and for Years she suffered with debilitating foot pain, you know, to the point at which she would have to take cool packs or ice packs to work to, to stand on to get through the day. And, and uh, we, after discussion with her, I got access to her medical treatment plan. And this was her treatment plan from 2012 to 2015. During that period of time, they were trying to figure out what was causing her pain. So during that period of time, she saw over 20 different healthcare providers, multiple differential diagnoses, trying to figure out what it was thousands of dollars worth of diagnostic tests from MRIs to bone scans, DEXA scans, thousands of dollars of medications of which look at the top, you know, non steroidals naproxen, ibuprofen, Toradol, Voltaren, uh, all these compounding creams, none of which was really helping her. And she sent this, sent me a picture of her closet. This is kind of her life. And maybe some of you out there have inflammatory conditions and your closets look like this. Okay. Uh, but the mere suggestion that concentrated fruits and veggies and capsules would have a beneficial effect on her was met by this with her, from her physicians. And I get this because I'm a doctor, and we are not taught anything about the power of nutrition. Two weeks out of four years of medical school, that's it. Um, we're just used to writing prescriptions. And if you think food can be as powerful as the drugs we write, well, the truth is it really can be. 
not making any promises, not making any claims. It doesn't cure anything. But when you, again, like I said in the beginning, when you arm your body with the right nutrients, your body's going to figure out what to do with it. And so we, we started Shade on Juice Plus. And over about three and a half to four month period, she was able to wean herself down off of her pain medication. And she was pain free at the end of that period of time. And, you know, I, again, I'm not here to profess a cure or anything like that. I'm just saying the body knows what to do with those nutrients. Uh, but her story would be just a mere testimonial if it wasn't backed by the science. And here's some of the, what the studies on Juice Plus show compared to placebo, is that it does reduce these inflammatory markers like monocyte chemotactic protein, macrophage inflammatory protein decreased, RANTS, which is a huge acronym for an inflammatory molecule I can't even pronounce, and a reduction in that tumor necrosis factor alpha that I mentioned early on, one of these big um, inflammatory molecules. So the research, and this is just one study, I've got so many other studies, but because of the time issue, can't go through them all. But this is just one study that proves that what happened to Shada wasn't a, you know, a testimonial. It was a real life thing that was backed by the science. The science shows that it will decrease inflammation uh, in the human body. Um, and this particular study, this is, I just want to mention this because this is fascinating to me. Um, this is a study that was just published looking uh, at Juice Plus and how it altered uh, epigenetic markers, markers that sit on the outside of your DNA. And when I looked at some of these markers, a lot of these markers that were favorably altered had to do with inflammation, okay? Reduction in, in inhibition of tumor necrosis factor and interleukin-1 and all these that I won't go through with you guys. Uh, but over 1,600 genes were positively altered in the individuals who took Juice, juice Plus compared to placebo. In my recollection and in my knowledge, this is the first time that you've ever been able to standardize a product in a placebo-controlled study and show that it actually alters um, the way your genes are expressed. And, you know, you can't change your DNA. Okay, your DNA, you're hardwired to your DNA, but you can change the switches, the epigenomes on the outside. And whether those genes are turned on or not can be dependent on lifestyle. And, again, this is the first study that's really ever been shown to, to, to do something like this. So I think I would rather, wouldn't it be neat to, to, to have a product in your body that would actually turn that switch off before inflammation is even produced versus having to treat it, right? So, you know, this is an incredible uh, finding that I'm sure that more and more research is going to come down um, the pike. So before I close, I just want to tell you my issue as an athlete. It's one of my favorite pictures. This is when I did um, the St. Croix half years ago. And uh, you know, as, as an Ironman triathlete, you, we buck up against overtraining all the time. You know, we're volume junkies. I was constantly trying not to overtrain. I was trying to get the maximum amount of training without overtraining, but I was always tired. I was always fatigued. I was always sick and struggling. And, um, uh, it, and that produces a problem because I mentioned inflammation is important because it's adaptive. It teaches our bodies to train. But when you become chronically uh, inflamed as an athlete and you're not recovering and you're not putting nutrients into your body to aid that recovery, you end up with this chronic overtraining syndrome. And I know a lot of athletes that are involved with this. I had this as an issue, um, uh, before, um, before I started taking juice plus and it happened to me at Ironman Florida. But a year later when I started taking juice plus, I didn't have this as an issue and I was actually training harder, uh, believe it or not, but I was getting rest, which is necessary but I was also putting the anti-inflammatory properties into my body on top of eating uh, a good diet. So, you know, we know that inflammation, again, the cardinal signs of, of inflammation, heat, redness, swelling, pain, loss of function, but really, you know, the anti-inflammatory things that we can do, things that we can incorporate into our bodies that will help decrease inflammation. Eat more whole foods. We still, you still need to try to get seven to 13 servings of fruits and veggies every day. You need to exercise. Um, drink more water, get more sleep, and then bridge the gap. I like to say that, that taking Juice Plus is bridging the gap. And it's between the reality of what we eat on a daily basis and a more optimal amount of whole food nutrition that provides those nutrients, which your body's going to know exactly what to do um, to decrease inflammation. And I haven't even gone into the other studies on Juice Plus tonight about reducing oxidative stress and improving the immune system because tonight's talk was about inflammation, but there's a whole boatload of studies out there. So... Um, and with this, with Jim Rohn, who I just love, and he said, take care of your body. It is the only place you have to live. And that's true. And it's really true. I put the, the little kids down there. You know, we need to start with our children because kids are inactive today. They're not moving around. 
they're eating a lot of those, those, those processed foods. And I think we as parents have a huge responsibility um, to really start this right with our kids, not just for us, but for them. And, you know, inflammation can start in utero. You know, you, what mom's eating pregnant, that baby's, that fetus is getting a load too. So diseases can start off so early, even as in utero. So I think we're finally waking up to this whole issue of it's time to take care of our bodies. Um, because our bodies are, are, are wonderful machines. You just have to take good care of them, and they'll treat you, it'll treat you right uh, the rest of your life. So uh, with that, I would like to thank you guys. Um, I hope that this has helped. And again, it's little baby steps, making simple changes that, that can have huge, huge ramifications for the rest of your life. So I want to thank you. Thank you, Dr. Phillips. That was fantastic information. We'd like to encourage you to get back with the person who invited you to view this webinar and learn more. Thank you again, Dr. Phillips, and thank you all for joining us.